Hello, welcome to my channel Dalma Makes. In this video, I'll show you the process of making this aquatic embroidery and the handmade frame for it. I got the idea for this embroidery from a page from a coloring book, uh, which I manipulated a little bit digitally and then printed out on this water-soluble sticky stabilizer. For the background, I'm going to be using a piece of tie-dyed jersey fabric. After I stuck the stabilizer on, I'm going to uh, stretch this into an embroidery hoop making sure that it's taut and it will keep flat over time. I'm going to start the embroidery process with uh, the plants, uh, seaweeds, whatever you want to call them. This is of course a fantasy scene. Um, some elements may look similar to real plants or creatures, but I was never going for realism. For some of the seaweeds, I'm going to be using a chain stitch for other a stem stitch, and I will also mix a variety of styles. I enjoy having different kinds of textures, and having my pieces quite dimensional. Of course, the embroidery process itself is very lengthy, so instead of showing you everything, I'm just going to show you snippets of my progress. Just quickly going through uh, filling in the plants and seaweeds, and then I'll start on my largest fish which I am going to sort of make it look like a traditional goldfish. I tackled the fins first and I was going for a rich golden orange look. And then one by one I'm going to embroider all the scales. They're very dimensional and touchable. And as you can see, I cannot stop myself from petting it all the time. And finally, I filled in the face with a sort of very fine, long and short stitch. With the first fish done, I tackled the second one, which sort of looks like a clownfish, but not really. It's just the coloring of it. My problem at this point was that the hoop was too small and I didn't have enough space to finish the tail of the second fish. So actually I just took it off and worked with it freehand. But I don't think that affected it negatively, I think the second fish came out alright too. I'm going to remove the excess of that sticky stabilizer just so that I have less to scrub on the material itself. Um, it does disintegrate in water uh, quite nicely, but I'm just making my job easier by cutting off um, the free bits. So I'm just trying to get rid of as much of it as possible. And after this step, I'll just go straight to the sink um, soak it for about an hour and then gently scrub it with my fingertips. When it was fully cleaned, I just stretched it on a piece of cardboard with some pins and left it to dry overnight. I had to stretch it because the jersey fabric is actually quite flexible and I wanted it to be as flat as possible. Of course, I want to give it a good solid backing, so I'm using a sturdy piece of cardboard that I measured and I'm trimming the edges to make sure that everything is at a nice 90 degree angle and I have sharp edges. And then I'm just stretching my piece um, and using hot glue 
to fix it in place. I have a silicone finger protector um, so that the heat um, that seeps through the fabric doesn't actually burn my fingers. And bit by bit I'm just gluing on all the edges to the back of this piece, um, making sure that there's even stretch and all of the corners are tucked in nicely. I want the front to be as flat and stretched as possible without distorting anything. When I'm done with that, I'm just attaching it to another bigger piece of cardboard and this is going to be the base of the frame. To make the frame itself, I am using some foam core because corrugated cardboard has those unsightly edges and I just didn't want to deal with it. So I'm just cutting out a rectangle that is the same size as the big backing um, and then cutting out another rectangle from the middle that's just the right size for my embroidery seam to come through. Just tidying up some of the edges and just testing the fit. Thankfully, I made no mistakes. To hide the edges of the foam core and to add a little bit of extra texture, I'm just using some masking tape. Uh, this masking tape I'm using actually has a slight ridged texture, which I think looks nice. And I'm just wrapping all the edges, both on the inside and the outside of this frame. At this point I realized that the embroidery piece itself is raised up a bit too much and I might need a little bit of padding to make sure that the frame itself is going to lie flat on top. So I'm just using some extra bits of cardboard um, to raise the edges. To add a little bit more interest and texture, I'm using some pieces of string and wrapping them around uh, the frame. Sort of adding little bundles here and there, uh, trying to avoid symmetry. Because this piece is aquatic themed, I thought I might as well go all in on the marine aesthetic and I'm using a little bit of an onion bag. Uh, sometimes onion or garlic comes in these like really stre stretchy net bags and I save them to <laughs> use them for crafting um, because they look a little bit like fishing nets to me. At least in this sense, I hope it will. So I just glued on two pieces to two opposite corners for some added texture. With this step done, I'm just going to paint everything with a nice dark brown. I think it's burnt umber. And this is primarily acting as a base coat, but I also like brown as a good neutral point to start the frame. And it will also make sure that um, netting is going to stick to the frame permanently. I only used a few dabs of glue here and there because I didn't want any big blobs. I'm also painting brown the backing and the edges of the other piece. While the brown dries, I am using these laser cut um, wood discs and I'm painting them a nice blue color. 
I'm going to use these to uh, decorate the frame with. And I thought it would be easier if I painted them individually instead of trying to struggle with the edges after they are stuck on. Now with all the paint dry, I'm actually assembling things. So I'm going to stick on the frame piece to the backing, making sure that everything lines up just right. Now I'm figuring out where my circles should go. I was thinking they're a little bit reminiscent to air bubbles. Um, because I have some in the scene as well and they're sort of the same blue uh, that I used for some of the seaweed. I just like the idea of bringing some from the inside to the frame. And I'm just sticking them on with more hot glue. Other elements that I want to use on this frame are little tiny seashells. They're actually some sort of small snail shells, but they're very beautiful. Um, and I'm also going to be using a few pieces of sea glass just here and there, sort of deciding um, where to put them and attaching them with hot glue and little aesthetic clusters. I know they're a little bit difficult to see right now, but I will put close-up pictures at the end of the video. So if you want to see that detail, stick around till the end. To take it even a step further, I am using some PVA glue um, and some of these black little beads as an extra element and as well as some fine granite. Um, to act as sand. I could have used sand but it was a little bit too fine at this scale and the fine granite actually has little specks of different colored um, things in them and I just like the way it looks. And it's just a simple technique of applying the PVA glue um, sticking on some beads and then sprinkling on the sand and then shaking off the excess. And I'm going to do this all around for the frame, sort of picking the middle uh, sections because the edges do actually have that textured masking tape. By adding the sand, I'm effectively covering all of the naked areas that were left over. I'm adding less sand to the part that I actually have the netting on because it's already interesting and has its own texture. I didn't want to cover all of that up. And I left this to dry for a good six hours. After that, I'm going in with some dry brushing. I'm going to be using a nice chalky light brown and just sparingly dry brush on the areas that don't have elements on them. I'm trying to bring out the texture of that masking tape and also um, that string. When I'm done with the brown, I am using a little bit of green paint and I'm mainly focusing on the bubbles here. Um, with each one coming from the same direction I'm going to paint about half of them uh, with the green so that it has a little bit of color variation and more interest and I just think it matches the background a bit better. To seal in the sand and tint everything with an uh, antique look, I'm using some yellow shellac ink. This will make things slightly shiny, but it's a really, really good sealer and it will make sure that fine granite is not going anywhere. I'm making sure to saturate those areas. And I've gone around all the edges of the frame as well. 
the last thing left to do is to add something to hang the picture from and I just used another piece of that string that I painted dark brown and attaching it with hot glue and a piece of that masking tape and this will hold solid and it will never come off and we're done my embroidery piece is nicely framed and it's a finished project I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Please let me know what you think about it in the comments. I would love to hear some of your feedback. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel. I make lots of different crafty projects and I already have a great variety on my channel. So you can go check that out now. Thank you for watching. I hope you're having a nice day. Bye.